No, I feel like I've been so outspoken about so many different things that people haven't liked over the years that I'm kind of immune to it. I think these are important stories to tell. I knew that whether or not I was involved, somebody was going to tell it. So I thought I could help make it the best it could be. <laughs> Uh, it's been a pleasure to meet you, actually. So thank you for this interview. Cool. We're going to talk about Play Playboy Murders because I watched the second season, a few episodes. I love the work we are doing. I think it's very valuable for us, for women especially. So congratulations on all the work you're doing. Why did you decide yourself to dedicate to this project and to expose all this dark side of such a famous empire? When the producers brought the idea to me, I looked at the cases and I realized that some of the cases I'd never heard of, even though I thought I knew everything about everybody who'd gone through the Playboy world. And I was so intrigued by these cases and I thought this is a show that I would love to watch as a viewer, even if I wasn't involved. So I was excited to be a part of it. And as we were doing season one, it got such a great reception and I started thinking of different stories I'd heard of different murders from people in the Playboy community. So when season two came around, I met with the producers, we collaborated on which cases we were going to cover. And I just love covering these cases because I'd like to portray the women of Playboy as more than just a Playboy bunny and try to get into more of who they are and what they're all about. Yes, you talk about in the show, you see a lot of what they wanted to do in their lives and it's very emotional for, for some moments. Were you afraid at some point to expose all this? No, I feel like I've been so outspoken about so many different things that people haven't liked over the years that I'm kind of immune to it. I think these are important stories to tell. I knew that whether or not I was involved, somebody was going to tell it. So I thought I could help make it the best it could be. Thank you. You also were uh, involved in this world. And how do you, how, how, what was the moment when you enter Playboy? And when, what's, what was the time that you said, this is it, I want to, I want to leave? I think my first experience with Playboy was trying out for the Millennium Playmate search like 24 years ago. It was so long ago. And then I finally left after living there with half for seven years because I wanted to start a family of my own and the relationship was getting really rough. So I finally left. Okay, thank you. Do you go through a lot of emotional repercussions when you go through your personal story and all the other stories? Because at some point they touch each other. You, there are similarities, maybe. How do you feel? How do you go through all these emotional repercussions? It can definitely get emotional. The way I handle it is just being very compartmentalized with my life. Work is work. My time with my kids is my time with my kids. I'm not on my phone or doing anything else when I'm with them. I always make sure to get enough sleep, work out every day and just pace myself. I try to get into the research for the shows earlier rather than later, so I'm never rushing anything. So it's really important for my mental health just to be able to pace everything. I understand. There are some things that are kind of different from the first season to the second because there are different stories. What are we going to see that it's actually like uh, we, we didn't see in the previous one? Oh, this season is so interesting. It's definitely more of a roller coaster because we cover cases like the Dorothy Stratton case, which is probably the most famous Playboy murder case, but we talk to people who've never spoken publicly about it before. We cover it in a really different way. Also, we cover a lot of cases that people haven't heard of. There was a case that was connected with Sharon Tate and the Manson murders. There's cases that involve people I knew, and it covers the course of so many different decades from the 60s to the 2010s. So there's a huge variety this season. Do you think there are new topics in be between the first season and the second season? Do you think this one has some new topics besides all the murders? Absolutely. I mean, our season premiere about um, Jason Tardio and Sandy Bentley, it's really interesting. It involves a transactional relationship. It involves a jewel heist. It involves uh, embezzling. It involves so many different things that lead up to the murder. It's just like a stranger than fiction case. Do you have any case that touched yourself in a more personal way? Yeah, definitely. The season finale involved a woman named Jill Ann Spaulding, who I met about 20 years ago. And I didn't know she passed until I was doing research for my podcast about a year and a half ago. And 
I found out that she was killed by her husband in a murder suicide. So I never heard that and I wanted to dig deeper into that story. So that was very shocking to me. I understand. We have a, we're in a new world at this moment where everything goes fast and there are so many platforms where people monetize their content, especially women. And it's kind of dangerous for young young women. What do you what can you say to those to, to these young women that are exposed to this uh, world that wants to prey on their sexuality? Yeah, I think it's so important to stay safe both in real life and online. I think whether you're in the public eye or not, you should be very careful about what you post on social media. Don't post where you are in real time. Don't I mean, I don't post my kids' faces. I try to be really careful about that. I think on OnlyFans too, you should be really careful about what you send out because it can always get leaked and it can be time consuming and next to impossible to get even copyrighted stuff off of the internet. I think people should limit their time they spend working each day so they're not constantly 24 7 inundated with really demanding DMs and things like that. I think it's really important to create mental health boundaries for yourself before you even join a platform like OnlyFans for sure, because it can be a lot for some creators. The show touches, it touches the very emotional things that, uh, that we talk about, but there are other things that you want to talk about the Playboy world that you haven't gone there yet. Yeah, it was really interesting to tell stories from different decades. You know, I know so much about Playboy history and I find it fascinating. And I loved covering the story of, we cover a story of a woman who was a Playmate of the Year in the 1960s. So that was super interesting. I just love getting into all those eras. And what is for Holly in this world, in this new 2024, what are you going to do? What well, after pro- Playboy Murders season two, there's another show called Lethally Blonde, which is similar. It's not Playboy specific. It's all about murders that involve people who are on the outskirts of the adult industry. So I'm really passionate about that one as well. Okay. Well, thank you, Holly. I think we are done here. So it's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, you so too. much. Thank you.